In this video, we'll take a look at Canon cameras and Skahoi products. The C700 is the top of the line Canon cinema camera, and it can actually be controlled with Skahoi products. A number of other Canon products exist, which you can also control, like the CF, ah, sorry, XF405 camera. It has LAN control, and the same is true for the C200 and that whole series, the C500, C100, and so forth. All of these products, all of them, are possible to control with the RCV100 controller from Canon. And what we have done is to implement the same feature set that controller has, but you can manage it on a distance via Ethernet using Skahoi products. So basically, what products can do this? You already know if you have seen our videos that we have an RCP, and an RCP is this kind of form factor um, controller device which fits very well into a, uh, a rack in an OB truck for instance next to other similar controllers so typically you have one for each camera on your set and the RCP from Skahoi can work with the C200 and 700 and the XF405 using Ethernet Langlink. So since the cameras themselves do not have Ethernet ports you can use to control them you need a device in between that will convert from Ethernet based commands over to the 2.5 millimeter jack that goes into these cameras. And that's what the Ethernet Lang Link does. So when you have the RCP and a C700, for instance, close to the C700, you place the Ethernet Lang Link connected to the C700's input for Lang control and you're in business. So that's what we are looking at in this video. We have the RCP right here, C700 over here. Thank you Canon Europe for sending us, uh, supporting us in, in, in doing this implementation work. We are super happy about it. And uh, we can now show um, this integration. So uh, on this RCP, we have standard stuff like the preview button here. We have toggle knobs that you also know from the RCV100 for eye raise focus and knee. So that's all standard. Now, um, just keep in mind that anything we can do on the RCP is really what can be done with the RCV100 and then a few things more, but the protocol is very much what the RCV100 can do and to a, to a large extent it's about increasing and decreasing values. So we can increase and decrease iris for instance and that is kind of difficult to map to this joystick, but we have managed to do it in a, in a fairly well working way, at least if you are a little bit cautious about what you're doing, you can see that I'm now increasing the iris of the camera, I can decrease again. If you make really large movements, it may get out of sync. It may get out of sync because the, uh, uh, the pol we're basically sending increment and decrements by the joystick to the camera. But it works as an iris joystick, which you would expect from an RCP, as you can see. If it gets out of sync, you have a little knob here that will help you calibrate and reach the outer positions better. So we, uh, you can see the iris percentage here and um, then we have an ND filter selector right here. So the camera has ND filters, which is uh, basically a cycle function. I, every time I press it, you can see a new ND filter is applied. And then we have ND filter three, and then we are going back to the default, right? If I press once more, then we're back to the uh, no ND filters as all, at all. Let's move on to the upper section of the RCP. So we have a button here for turning on and off the power of the camera. So in fact, you can turn on and off power on a distance. That's pretty neat. Uh, so we map that to a button, which I will not trigger right now. Then we have a button here to select um, the mode for ISO gain. And let's just see where we see that. Um, I think we see it on the display. Uh, let me see. Mm. No, wait, we actually see it on the camera. That's what I mean. Yeah, so uh, let me just see if I can follow here. Now, you, you see the um, output from the camera. We have enabled the menu display, and that's a very important option, which we have put onto this key. So if I press here, you can see this is just the, uh, the clean feed out of the camera, but I can enable the menu display so I can see all these things. And that's also important because with the RCP, you, uh, will, you, you may need to, to look at this display to, um, to watch what values you are you are getting to, right? Um, by the way, now we are here, we have this record button right here. Again, I, I don't have a card in it, so I can't start stop recording, but that would be possible using that button if I had a CFast card in this device. Now, uh, I was promising you that the ISO gain and the shutter selection could be shown on uh, this screen. So just notice as I'm, I'm pressing this uh, button, let me see, we should be able to 
Um, is it the ISO or the gain? Okay, maybe it's yeah. Let's let's look at shutter speed. We see now 25 hertz. Now it's 1 12th, so that's the shutter speed. Um, I can press again to move to uh, another type of um, display for shutter speed, 125, and in this can case, the, the shutter angle. So if I want to adjust shutter angle, it's all done. If I actually want to adjust any setting, it's done by the buttons up there. And uh, the shift key is what changes between the two modes that you have access to up here. So you see that um, if I want to access shutter speed selection, it's on this knob corresponding to this um, uh, this tile in the display. I'm holding down the shift key and as I'm now changing, you see that I'm affecting the shutter angle. That is clear from the output where I have the menu display enabled. Okay. So uh, likewise, if I want to change the sensor gain, you can see that I have a, um, a way to affect the ISO uh, setting for um, for the sensor. Moving on to up here, there's an important thing. This button is important because you can actually enter the menu of the camera on a distance. So if I press and hold, I'll enable the menu of the camera. You see it right here. And now you can see how this gives me access to navigate around and access basically all settings you know in your camera by turning this knob. So I can, uh, let's say I wanna go in here and I want to do something with waveform monitoring. So I enter there. Um, let me see, on the video output? Yes, okay, maybe. Uh, I don't know if that will give me waveform monitoring here. I haven't tried that. Monitor and HDMI output, that might be what we are doing. So enable. Okay, so if I want to exit, I can just exit all the way. I can press and hold the button to get all the way out. And there you have waveform monitoring on your output on, on the display. So you can, in other words, you can access the menu here. Actually, there's a direct access to uh, the um, uh, custom uh, picture menu settings right there. We'll, we'll take a look at that in just a moment. So if we look up here, we have white balance on this key and you can see how um, other white balance is here right now. Then we have banks like uh, white balance A and B. Let's go to uh, white balance A. It's a little bit off. If I press and hold, it will trigger uh, a automatic white balance reading for this bank. So that is now on bank number A. If I move on to the fixed uh, settings like um, uh, P3200, you can see the the... Um, I think, yeah, I think maybe I hold down the shift key or shall I just press once? So if I press once, what I actually do now is I get into a mode where if you follow the white, uh, the Kelvin temperature 3200, I can now increase and decrease this value uh, by turning this knob, okay? I can always paint additional blue and red into my picture using these two knobs over here. So that's a general offset of the white balance, no matter the mode. Um, then we have stuff like master pedestal, master uh, black, blue, and red here. And now I want to show you in the menu, because if I go into the menu, uh, sorry, I, I'll enable the custom picture menu from here, and then we can navigate down to the other settings. Because all these things are actually happening as we do them. So you can see master pedestal, the, the setting that I'm adjusting right there is following, the value you see on the display is also picked up by the camera. Likewise, we are adjusting black blue and black red by using these knobs. So, um, yeah, the, the values you see are actually uh, pulled out of the camera or they are sent to the camera and in correspondence with what you find in there. Holding down shift key, you have access to stuff like knee point and knee slope. If we had a lens that supported focus and zoom, the similar things you could do for the RCV-100 would be possible to do here, like sending pulses to increase and decrease focus um, point, and also uh, probably zoom speed. I'm not totally sure about that. And there we have a B gamma setting. I wonder what that is, black gamma maybe. So um, that's something that, uh, let me see if we can find that in the menu, why not? So uh, if we move out here, then black gamma would be in here and you can see, I hold down the shift key. So the black gamma setting is actually shown right there as we would expect. So that's all good. So basically all these cameras from Canon are more or less the same in terms of what they support. There might be differences, uh, I could imagine, in some cameras. Um, I'm not an expert in the exact feature set of each. 
what I want you to, to, to um, understand from watching this video is that the official panel from Panasonic, uh, sorry, not Panasonic, Canon, the RCV100, all the things that you can do with that panel is possible in the Skahoi RCP using the Ethernet link link to convert or, and transport commands all the way out to the camera where you connect this to the link input of the camera so you can have remote control and use these great cameras in your live production uh, sets um, that you, uh, you encounter. So remote control and long distance over Ethernet, even if you have a fiber, fiber system to transport the Ethernet control, you can do that using this solution with two points connected over IP. Uh, and getting in touch with LAN cameras like this. Mm -hmm.